How's it going everybody? This is going to be a Westerbeek 8.5 kW gas generator. As you can see here at idle, I'm surging and I'm surging quite a bit. The choke has fully opened up and the engine is warm. There's no load on this generator, but man, it is surging. And I'm going to take you through the process to fix it. So back here on the back side of the governor, I'm going to be pointing to it here in just a second. I'm going to be putting the socket on there. That is what you call the bumper screw. This is going to take the surging out of your engine. And I'm just showing you here that there is a locking nut and that is on the there, right there at the base of the governor. And I'm going to loosen up that locking nut about a half a turn. So that way, when I stick this socket on there, on that bumper screw, it's going to take the surge out. And I turn it clockwise, maybe about an eighth of an inch. And it doesn't take much at all. So just turn it just enough to smooth the engine out. The surge will go away. And it's really going to make it sound a lot better. And then basically, that's it. I'm checking my RPMs now. As you can see, my RPMs are a little high, but the surge is gone. It was surging about 100 RPMs. All right, so I'm maintaining really close to 1800 RPMs. And the 14.5 on the left is my alternator voltage. And everything seems to be running so much smoother now. We're maintaining that close to the 1800. That's gonna get us our 60 Hertz. All right, so what we got now is we're sitting around 1750 RPM and we need to maintain that 1800 to get our 60 cycles, 60 Hertz cycles. So what I'm gonna do now is make a slight adjustment and I do have a load on this. So we are loading up this about, uh, we're sitting around 40% capacity of this generator. So now what we're gonna do is bring this generator up to the 1800 under load and get it to level out. All right, so now I've got a load on the generator and it's all warmed up. And what I'm gonna be doing here is adjusting the power screw. And it's located right here on the side of the governor. First of all, I've got to, once again, loosen up a locking nut that will keep everything nice and secure. You're gonna back it off about a half a turn right there. And now you've got a, just a regular bolt that now I'm gonna make an adjustment with my wrench. And it was easier to go ahead and bring my tachometer down into the engine room slash timing light. That way I can see it and uh, what I'm doing here is I'm putting my wrench on there. First of all, I've got to get in the right direction. As you can see, I'm running about 1780, 1790 with a, close to a 40% load on the generator. And what I'm doing right here is I'm just bringing it up. I'm just turning that power screw a little at a time. And I figured I'd like to shoot for between 1800 and 1810. I'd rather be a little bit on the high side so that way in case I increase my load on my generator, say 50% or so, 60%, that I can go ahead and maintain that 1800 to achieve that 60 hertz. And right here, I'm good to go. It didn't take much, guys, whatsoever. And uh, it's all good. So right at 1800, it should be putting out the 60 hertz. And it'll fluctuate back and forth just a little bit because you can't get it just right. But that's as close as you can get it. The surgeon is gone at idle, and it is working really good. All right, so this is where I got the information on. You can get online, you go to the Westerbeek site, and you can get all this information there. This can be my generator, 8.5 BTGA. That's 8.5 kW. And right here is what I was talking about is the 60 hertz. In order to achieve the 60 hertz, it needs to be at 1800 RPM. Okay, so that's real important to follow. And then let me switch over here and I'll show you this other information that you're going to need to know. Because when I was down there, it's a little bit hard to see, but this is all of the information that you need to, to take the surge out of your engine at idle. As you can see, mine was surging really bad. Um, and if you need to, you can press pause and you can read this and it'll get you all the information that I need. But basically, the bumper screw is located right there. There was still paint on mine, and as soon as I touch it with a wrench, that paint started to chip off. So most likely, this has never been 
adjust it ever. I've got 187 hours on this Westerbeek generator, so it's basically still brand new. So that's how you take the surge out at idle with no load, okay? It's very important, no load, and you just turn it clockwise. You turn it clockwise a little bit, and then you'll just see the engine start to smooth out. And you just take it, you just move it until all the surge is gone, and then you're good to go. Now, in order to adjust the RPM, the higher RPM, the, the load RPM, that's where you make the adjustment right here on the increase slash decrease speed screw. And that's real important because you want your engine to be running this one here at 1800 RPM to achieve under load the 60 Hertz. Because listen, generator is not going to run unloaded unless you're just doing maintenance. A generator is supposed to run loaded because you're drawn and you're making that generator produce electricity because you're using it on your boat or whatever, uh, if you got a home or whatever. But since this is a marine generator, this is basically how you make that adjustment, okay? So you do have another adjustment here if you need to. Um, I did not need to make that adjustment. It was just basically the bumper screw and then to increase the speed screw to achieve your 1800 RPM under load. This is what it'll screw up and you turn that. If you need to increase your RPM, you need to turn it clockwise, decrease counterclockwise. It's that simple, okay? Um, what this does is this moves a little lever, puts pressure and draws the spring backward. And then that is what's actually going to uh, move the governor on the internal of this. Now, what's important on your governor is that you also have a fill oil plug right here okay and you've also got an oil fill level which is going to be basically through here now it calls for right at i think it's uh three ounces of oil and you're supposed to change your oil out of your governor every 500 hours so that's real important to do the maintenance on that don't forget about it it calls for a 10w30 and if I was you, use full synthetic and it will just give it that much more protection. All right, so this is what we're looking like. We're sitting right around 125 on the AC meter, 125 volts. And we're drawing about, right now the heater just kicked on. It's only drawing about, I don't know, what is that, about four amps, five amps, something like that. But before at idle with that surging going on you you'd actually see this gauge surge right along with the engine speed so we adjusted the idle to maintain that nice smooth idle at 1800 rpm okay and then also under load you want to make sure that it's putting out 1800 rpm on this engine, on this Westerbeek, so that we can maintain our 60 Hertz. And that's exactly what we're doing. We made a slight adjustment on the governor and uh, we're good to go. This generator is working great. On this generator, it was really simple. It took me just a few minutes to do. So if you've got a generator that's surging a little bit or something's not really right, and you know that you haven't done a recent tune-up, go ahead and do that tune-up first check your fuel filters, make sure you got good spark plugs, check your cap and rotor in there as well, and make sure you're good. And what I had to do before this was I actually had to change out my ignition coil. I had a small crack right next to my main coil wire. It was actually arcing and going over to my positive side supply, my positive 12 volt supply on that uh, coil. And I thought I, it was coming from the engine. I heard a little ticking noise and it wasn't until I got down into the actual engine room then I saw a little spark fly around that coil wire uh, housing right there where it all connects where the coil wire uh, goes from your distributor cap to the coil got a little spark right there and I thought it was the wire but it wasn't it was actually the distributor not the distributor the coil <laughs> the coil had developed a small crack in there and then causing the voltage leak is going to the path of least resistance. So make sure you do a tune-up really well on your generator. 
if you got some issues before you attempt to go ahead and uh, smooth it out with the procedure that I showed you. So hope this helps somebody. If you guys got some comments or suggestions, please put it down in the comments because listen, we all learn from other people and hopefully somebody can learn from this little video and get their generator running smoothly again. So God bless you guys. We'll see you soon with more pro both projects. Come see. Adios.